we're now in Arequipa, or more specifically, we're in the very colorful Cerro Colorado, one of the 29 districts in Arequipa, home to lots of street vendors and very friendly Peruvians. We're actually at 2,400 meters above sea level, so we're just starting to feel it a little bit, um, but it's kind of effectively breaking us in gently because tomorrow it's gonna start to climb. Uh, when we get into La Paz, it's gonna get a lot, lot tougher. Today's stage is a monster from San Juan de Marcona to Arequipa and different routes for the bikes and quads to the cars and trucks. The bikes and quads will cover a total of 770 kilometers today with the cars and trucks 267 kilometers special stage totaling 933 before they reach the bivouac in Arequipa. In the bikes, Joan Barreda was on an absolute flyer. The Honda rider making good use of his later start position to vault from 11th to 4th overall in the standings. And we keep uh, really pushing during all the stages, attacking, and we do a perfect stage. It was a great ride too from KTM's Matthias Volkner. Starting the day third overall, he absolutely nailed his navigation to finish today's stage second over 10 minutes behind Barreda. Yeah, it was not so bad, but it was again so many sand dunes and, and really tricky navigation as well. But yeah, in the end I don't try to risk not so much because yeah, this is a day like where you can lose a lot of time. And I think Johan do, do a really good job and Adrian open all day the piece, so it was a little bit more easy for us to, to because we have one line, but anyway it was really hard day again. But it's Adrian van Beveren, fifth fastest today, who continues to lead in the bikes. Another solid ride from Kevin Benavidez, though, means he is just one minute behind van Beveren overall, with Volkner third, just 14 seconds further back. A great battle shaping up in the bike category. Massive news in the cars today, a punishing stage for the drivers. Sebastian Loeb is out of this year's Dakar rally. Things started going wrong when he was stuck in a five metre deep hole for nearly three hours. Once they got going again, his co-driver Daniel Elena then suffered an injury after landing in a dune. In massive pain, the pair were unable to go over 30 kilometres an hour, eventually having to retire from his third Dakar rally with Elena seeking medical assistance. No such problem for his teammate though. They call him Mr. Dakar for a reason. Stefan Peter Hansel in unstoppable form today. An incredibly tough stage, but the Frenchman imperious, taking victory by nearly five minutes from Toyota's Bernhard Ten Brinker, putting in another great performance in the Toyota. Bad news for football star Andre Villas-Boas, who retired from his first Dakar after heavy impact with a June. At the business end though, Stefan Petterhansel in command in the cars. Here are the results for the bike and car categories from today's stage. And here are the current overall standings. Head to redbull.com forward slash Dakar for full results and much more. Well, a massive day in the dunes today. Disappointed for Sebastian Loeb, his third Dakar retirement, and we certainly hope that Daniel Elena uh, gets better very, very quickly. Now, a quick update on the trucks, the quads, uh, and the S by S's in the trucks. It's been a difficult start for Kamaz. Irak Mardiv rolled on stage two. He left the boys with some work to do. He's currently down in seventh. Edouard Nikolov, though, last year's winner, absolutely smashing it. He ended up on his side today. Don't ask me how, but they got the truck back upright within around 12 minutes and he went on to win the stage. So he's currently leading in the trucks. In the quads, Sergei Karyakin, again, last year's winner, was leading the class until today, 44 kilometers into the stage. He came off the quad, uh, broke his arm. So it's Ignacio Casale with a massive lead. And let's not forget the S by S category. At this moment, as we speak, Reynaldo Varela is just four minutes ahead of Juan Carlos Rube Ramos. And it's worth noting as well that this is probably the hardest section for those guys, isn't it? Uh, so we are now about to head to Bolivia and uh, say goodbye to Peru. But I did manage yesterday to find a little piece of heaven.
If your car's serviced and you can get down here sharpish, then do. This is the uh, Punta San Juan Nature Reserve. You can find anything down here from sea lions to penguins to Peruvian boobies up there. Even whales and dolphins are spotted down here. This is quite a mind-blowing experience. ancient ruins and complete charm and San Juan de Marcona is full of all of the above. It's actually the gateway to the Ballesta Islands and this little village is only inhabited by 20,000 people and pretty much all of them are fishermen. The addition of Peru again on the Dakar has produced some nail-biting racing and with scenery like this and the stunning sand dune landscapes that the competitors are driving on, long may it stay as a country the Dakar visits. So, typical bivouac situation. Now, we happen to be with KTM at the moment, but it's the same for every team, every rider, every driver. They turn up at the bivouac, it's already made. The mechanics jump on the car or the bike. Now, if we come down here, we can see Lyre Science's bike being worked on already. Uh, Antoine Mayo's bike's already finished, ready for tomorrow. And just if you look down there, we've got Matthias Volkner and Toby Prices. Those bikes are done, they're put to one side, out of the way, everything's cleared. But they come in, all the tools are here, everybody's ready, the mechanics, the engineers, the riders will jump off the bike, they'll speak to their engineer about the next day, about how the bikes perform, they'll make any changes they need to do and make a service. They will fully service the entire bike from the day's stage. Now, carry on coming down here with me. We can see the boys. Hey, fellas, how we doing? This is Andy, just, uh, just, just doing a bit of work on the boys. Now Andy's the team massage. Basically, when the, the riders come in, everybody sits down with Andy and just gets a, a good rub over and a good loosen up ready for the next day. This is the bit of the Dakar that I really like. If you swing the camera around here, the tents. Now this is where all the teams sleep at night. It's sometimes 40 degree heat, sometimes it's pouring with rain. It's pot luck, but you're in tents and if you're lucky, you might get a spot somewhere on the floor in the truck. For the riders and drivers in the Dakar Rally, it's a different story. They come in, they've had a rough day out in the sand. They talk to their engineers first and foremost who crack on with the bike, then they come to their very fancy mobile home. Now, normally they'll leave their stuff outside for the following day, all to have it cleaned by the team. They'll look after all of that stuff, and then they come in. And this really is behind the scenes stuff. I'm not entirely sure if we can come in here. Tobes, can we pop in for a bit? Legend, thank you, mate. Toby and Antoine just doing their road book at the moment. Good day today, fellas. Uh, not too bad, can't complain. Another day done. Another day done. Mate, can I just have a little look around your home for the next? Go for it, mate. Make Legend. Am, am I going to find anything I shouldn't find? Oh, don't go on that top drawer. <laughs> <laughs> so, doesn't get much more exclusive than this. As you can see here, Toby and Antoine, they have their own little kitchen area. In here, we've got drawers. Here we go, drawers. This is all Toby's stuff that he's pre-packed for each day. So he can just grab this for tomorrow, that's for the next day. And prepare their own food as well. It's nice for them to be able to come back, prepare their own food. Now come with me through here. Toby's bed. A pair of Toby, Toby Price's underpants there. Mate, this, this is disgusting. You need to tidy up your animal. Yeah. <laughs> the key thing for anybody doing the Dakar is a shower. So the boys have got their own shower unit each, their own bathroom, and somewhere to get away. And most importantly, coming back, somewhere for them to do their road book in a bit of peace and quiet. Tomorrow will be a disaster if they get this bit wrong. Fellas, I will leave you to it. Your legends, Toby, I did look in the top drawer, mate. You're, you're an animal. Pricey, pricey, pricey. Thanks, guys. See you later.
Now, we have seen some incredibly tough conditions on this year's rally so far. And don't forget, there's still a long, long way to go. But temperatures in the cars up and over 40 degrees. Fitness is absolutely pivotal and being prepared. And you caught up with KTM and Toby Price all about that. Yeah, it's not often or there's certainly not many of us that push ourselves to that extreme. So it was quite interesting to see how they cope with the demands on the body. There are so many demands on our competitors during the rally, both physically and mentally, that they have to deal with during the course of the 15 days. And uh, I just wanted to catch up with Toby Price to see just how it is that you deal with these demands. So how much preparation, firstly, both physically and mentally, before the Dakar do you go through? Uh, yeah, like physically before the rally, we do a lot of training and um, yeah, a lot of time in the gym and a lot of time on the bike and, and, and mountain biking. So. For me, I enjoy this the most, and I do a bit of jet skiing for uh, on the side type of uh, bit of fun. But um, yeah, before we come here, we actually try and prep a lot of things like, like hydration bags and stuff. We uh, we have them all done and organised, ready for each day. So uh, that yeah, we basically just grab one out of the out of the cupboard, put water in it, straight into our uh, backpack, and away we go. Dakar is one of the most demanding uh, races in the world. Um, because you need, you need to know that we are in the desert and riders sweat a lot and dehydrate a lot and they need to be perfect to the other day to, and the other and the other day. So I will tell you about uh, what we do in order to perform correctly, okay? This is a camelback, this is Toby's camelback. It is filled with uh, electrolytes and we put 2.5 liters of water here in order to, um, to let him uh, drink from here during the race, okay? So he has like a straw here, and then he's like sipping, sipping, sipping while he's on the bike, okay? He needs sugar too because the race is too demanding, so he uh, carry, carry with him uh, these uh, like gummy bears, uh, gels, and these uh, cookies made of protein and glucose, okay? So he need to be eating during all the stage. Each morning they weigh us um, to see what we start at and then when we finish the stage, uh, they weigh us again. So um, today I think it worked out to be, I lost about two kilos. Toby uh, always drink water, but with salt pills and with uh, electrolyte uh, beverage, okay? He needs uh, to be hydrated, but smartly hydrated. If I can stay inside the top five, I'll be really pumped. Um, land on a podium, I'll be I'll be over the moon. If I can be on that top step, I um, I don't know. I might even just shave the mullet off and get it done. So <laughs> it'll be a big party. So we'll wait and see. What a mammoth day it's been. We've lost some seriously key players and it's not even halfway yet. So now we leave Peru and we head up into altitude into Bolivia. Absolutely. We leave Arequipa, we head for La Paz, four and a half thousand meters up. It's incredibly testing for all the drivers, competitors, and believe me, you and me as well. Remember to follow all the action using the hashtags Rally Dakar and Red Bull Motorsports. We will see you tomorrow and leave you by popular demand with some more of NASA is incredible on board from yesterday. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.